Interestingly enough, I had a concentration major, which was social gerontology. So I thought that I was going to work with um, older people in retirement communities or nursing homes. I graduated with my master's and then I went on an interview and they were like, oh, it's for a job running a donor egg program. I was like, what is that? And they explained what it was to me and I thought it was fascinating and like the absolute opposite end of what I had studied um, and went on the interview and thought it was amazing and was lucky enough to get the job and learned tons and tons of stuff. And I remember that I went to a Resolve meeting years later and they were giving one of the nurses I worked with an award and I remember her saying, I feel so blessed to have found my life's work. And I remember I was young and I thought, wow, what an amazing thing to think about, not realizing that I also found my life's work. And you know, it's been now 20 plus years of doing this. I have really good intuition about people, um, and whether that's an employee or a vendor, um, I am able to read people pretty well. And I think that's been my success here with just building relationships with staff, vendors, anyone, is that I'm able to see qualities in people that will help in roles that we hire for or just relationship building throughout the practice. It's different every day. Some days I have meetings all day where we're talking about calendars and physician templates and um, new software that we're looking at or the problems with phone systems and how we want to make all of those improvements and other days I get to actually collaborate and figure out new programs, new financing opportunities. Some days I'm meeting with your insurance company, so it really, it really depends. I think that's what I like the most about it is that um, every day is a little bit differently, but the core of my every day is like, what can I do? What can I contribute? Or how can I support making this experience better for patients and for staff? During the quarantine, I started cooking a lot and I have found that I really love cooking. Um, and I have like really embraced that and never thought I would be the person to like be excited about like a, a zester. I just got a new zester and it's like changed my whole life a little bit. My guilty pleasures, I would say used to be Bravo and like all the shows, but I have to say I think because now I'm older. I now have been watching a lot of Hometown on HGTV and I've bought many things recently because I needed to add color and her color psychology of adding joy I've, I've bought into. So I think that's probably my present guilty pleasure. So I was a patient myself, so I think um, having experienced the feelings of loss of control, um, I, for me personally, I felt there was desperation and just this drive to like figure out why this wasn't happening. I think that's still, I don't, I, I wish I can say that that goes away. It definitely, it definitely waxes and wanes over time. Um, I would have loved to have a bigger family. I have one son who's awesome, feel lucky to have him, but I, I would be lying if I said that I don't think about what it would have been like if I was able to have more kids. So I think knowing how hard this is, I really, really try to offer like a compassionate, supportive, efficient system. It is something I think about all the time. I think it's really important to know that there's a great team that's going to stand behind you the entire experience while you're here and they are working really hard to make sure that you have a good experience here. A lot of time is spent behind the scenes with the nurses and the navigators. Even the front desk experience and the medical assistants and the people that are back in the OR, the surgical team that's back there, they all really care about your end result because they really care about your journey and your outcome. You know, if you're pregnant, we experience the joy and if you have a loss, there's pain and there's pain too when patients don't get pregnant on their first or second cycle. They, everyone experience that same sadness. I don't want anyone to ever feel like they're a number because we all really care a great deal. I think the fact that there's a lot of ups and downs and just when you think you've got it figured out that's not always the case so I think had I known or what I would like people to know is that there's a lot of eyes and attention to this and that it, there may not be a straight path for everybody some people are lucky and have a straight path um, and others are, are more winding roads and I think just to be able to give yourself the room and the space to to just kind of um, know that there's a lot of unknowns. I think that's the hardest thing. It's like, why wouldn't this work? It should have worked, and why didn't it work? And I think that's the hardest part. I don't have any advice other than to be kind to yourself and, 
and honestly to probably try to surround yourself with things that are really just for you. Lots of things in life you do for other people and I think um, if you can find little things that you do just for you, whether it's listening to the Calm app, which I've newly embraced, or, or, or a special meal that you like, or special things that you do for yourself, I think trying to keep those going when you're in treatment is good.